there, you're like, wait a minute, that sounded correct. That can't be right. <laughs> the hell was that? Oh, hold on a sec. Oh my dear I'm God. Go yell at my children. It's a chest burster. Get the flamethrower. Hey, I'm recording and it's after midnight and people are asleep. Hey, tell your kid that after midnight, you got to let it all hang out. You're listening to the Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your host, Rich Outfield. I hate this place. And Big Anklevich. I hate everything you just said. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. Duh. Welcome to another episode of... The Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. Today we have for you our promised and much anticipated whoa, 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 question wait, wait. and answer. Wait, wait, did you, who, who anticipated this? Uh, there's this kind of really weird fan that we have named Algar Van Kluth. Oh. And he sent us a bunch of questions and said he was anticipating it muchly. Which I, I think I can uh, legally say it is therefore much anticipated. I guess legally, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> only legally, because otherwise everybody would see through the lie and, and I would be up for uh, charges. I don't know. Yeah, see, legally you may say that this episode is anticipated, but morally? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes you have to draw the line of just like, which do I want to be? That is true. That do is I want to sleep at night or do I want to be out of jail tonight? <laughs> well, if you're in jail, then you have a harder time sleeping because of other things that are going on there. Oh, no, not me. I, I had a cellmate and he was so affectionate. There, there was this one time where we were in the, the community shower. And All right. So today what we're doing is the uh, 10th anniversary... Question, answer, ask me anything from the fans episode. We're just kind of looking back on 10 glorious, <clears throat> wonderfully <clears throat> long, long, long years of doing the Steve Audio Fiction magazine. Once again, legally, <laughs> we cannot say that they were glorious. Oh, yeah. We've you're been right. told our council has said that, and then they also. Glory, glory holiest, I think, was what we, we were allowed to say. <laughs> hey, that was one time. Will you let me live it down? I thought you would like it. But uh, yes, it, I guess they have been long. Not for me. I mean, does it feel like 10 years have passed since we started this podcast? weirdly yes and no you know what i mean like <laughs> sometimes it does and other times like what no can't be it just depends i guess on the day or something like that i'm not sure what the deal is but yeah it is it is kind of weird to think that it's been 10 years that's a really long time that's almost as long as the entire school career of a high school graduate you know what i mean like we're only a couple years away from our podcast being able to graduate from high school it's going into its junior year in high school at this point that's how long that is hmm. that's just kind of crazy i don't know <laughs> but yeah what do you think do you, does it feel like it's been that long to you or do you feel like oh it just whizzed by well it as far as podcasting goes, no, it doesn't feel like it whizzed by. It feels like we've been doing this long and hard. The honeymoon has been over for so long. The seven-year itch <laughs> has come and gone. But for, like, real life, ten years, you think about, you know, movies that came out in 2008, songs that were popular in 2008. And that was yesterday, or mm, day before yesterday, if you squint. Well, it depends on the song, though. Like, for example, and nobody's ever heard this, and probably nobody ever will, because we'll probably just record a, a new one and never release the old one, but we recorded a final episode of the Steve Audio Fiction Magazine because we didn't want to be one of those podcasts that pod faded. It's kind of lame, right? To just slowly peter out and then disappear without ever saying, hey, see you later, everybody, and thanks for a good 10 years. So we recorded one a long time ago. Like, how long ago would you say that was? 2010? And 
we talk about a song in that final episode. Oh, a song that was new. It was, yeah, it was relatively new at the time or else you, you wouldn't have heard it and it wouldn't have got you thinking. But yeah, the song was a Katy Perry song where she says, we're going to live forever. Uh, no, we will be young forever. We'll be young forever. What song is that? Do you even remember? I can't remember. Um, I mean, I never knew Katy Perry very well to begin with. Teenage but... Dream is the name of that song. So, yeah. My um, edit of the final episode is from May 2011. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would have edited it right after we recorded it or if it months had gone by before, but... There's that. But yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah, it's uh, that was pretty early on in, in the show when it comes down to mm-hmm. it. Since our first episode, episode zero, dropped in July of 2008. So yeah, three years in, we're like, well, we better record our final episode. Of course, we've just got it sitting here. I wonder if anybody would find it interesting, if we should just release it. I'm afraid to ever release it, though, for people just to listen to and be like, oh, that's interesting. Because some, you know, there's always going to be like one or two people like, oh, no, that's the final episode. I guess Dune Steve is done. And they'll never check back to see if there's more. And those are the lucky ones. <laughs> We'll have lost a, a few listeners, I and mean, we have few enough as it is. So, last thing we need to do is try and fool them into thinking that our podcast is dead. Anyway, what do you want to talk about with this looking back show? Are we going to do just questions, or are we going to, you know, have our own agenda as well? Well, and no offense if you submitted a question when I asked this question, but how good are the questions? <laughs> are the questions good enough where I'll just be like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. Let's talk about that for seven minutes. Or should we do the, well, you know, this is how the show has changed my life. Or this is how, you know. I think we could do a little of both. The questions, uh, some of them are, are ones that will require some thought. Other ones are just ones that you can make a joke at and move on. But yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's several things that I feel we probably ought to talk about. Some of them are question-related, or from the questions. Okay, well, yeah, if, if the questions can be a springboard to good conversation, then I don't think we need to sit down and say... Uh, you know, according to this, Ed, we have done uh, 2,700 episodes of The Tonight Show, and uh, three were good. <laughs> yes, you... yes, you are correct, sir. Oh, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that, but outside my house right now, the mosquito abatement truck is driving past. Say spraying mosquito killing stuff into the air because there's been several mosquitoes found in the area already that have west nile and i think maybe zika virus as well good times in the old humid areas of the country yikes man (laughs) anyways now that he's moved on why don't we start off with a question yes yes let us um Oh, that one's not a question. That just says, congrats on 10 years. Oh, say it anyway. Uh, Hell, I'll say it. Hey, Big. Yeah? Congrats on 10 years. Oh, wow, thanks, man. You're you're, you're supposed to say you, too. I've actually got 43 years, but thanks, still. Oh. Okay, Void Munashi E. I I don't know if you're supposed to say both eyes. There's two eyes at the end. You say them both or just combine them into one sound? I, my guess is E. It's maybe you just hold okay. out the E. Hold it for a long time? Okay, let me say that again then. Void Munashi oh. says, Okay, this seems like the most obvious one. Where does the name Doonstief really come from? 
Oh, that's wow. That's how you want to start this thing? Jeez. <laughs> and while we're at it, Bria Burton says, "I second that question." Oh, can you do that? Can you just say I second? Yeah. Oh, yes. A splunge for me as well. That's right. Splunge. All right. So that was a question that uh, came up a lot in our show <laughs> over the years. I wonder why. <laughs> What did you think when I decided to name the show The Dune Steef? I, I was... Yeah, we might as well run the last episode. I was not pleased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was not something that you cared about. I, apparently, you didn't really care that much about what the show was called because you could have easily said, no, that's, let's try something else like The Edge of Tomorrow Podcast. Okay, that's pretty good, man. <laughs> Live podcast repeat. <laughs> I don't know. See, the one thing that I do like about the Dune Steve is that it's not going to be copied by anyone else. It's completely original and you're never going to get confused. You're never going to have your show called The Edge of Tomorrow when somebody's like, wait, what? Were you on the Edge of Tomorrow podcast or is yours Tomorrow's Edge? Because I know that there's two, and they both had an asteroid hit the Earth. Except for one of them, they went up in a spaceship and like blew up the asteroid before it hit the Earth, and the other one it actually hit. So which one was yours? The good one. <laughs> so, you know, there is that to the Dune, Steve. But yeah, over the years, we, we came up with... We made a, f- a fun running gag with the... Uh, what is What does the name really mean? Um, the name doesn't really <laughs> mean anything when it comes down to it. And, and the, the other thing that I'd like to say is that I already told you where the name really came from. It was just mixed in with all the other ones where we made it up. Uh, the real, the real origin of the name was in there. It's not really very interesting, which is the sad part. But yeah, when I was a young man in high school, me and my friends were a bunch of dorks, as you might have guessed. We we liked to have our own kind of little slang that we spoke amongst ourselves. And so we made up a lot of words and just used them as though they meant something. And we did a lot of talking backwards we would reverse words around and speak backwards to each other and i had friends who were in german they had german class in high school and they would use german mixed with backwards words mixed with made up words to the point where we were like oh we're so cool we like have our own language we thought we were awesome Anyways, one day, and the other thing that shouldn't surprise anybody was that um, we liked to make movies when I was in high school. We would we had a friend who had a video camera. We would set up that video camera and we would try and come up with funny little Monty Python-like skits that we would do. We would ad-lib them and uh, most of them were terrible. And they were edited in camera kind of thing, so even worse. But yeah, one time we had a skit where one of my friends was supposedly at the dentist, waiting to see the dentist. And we would do a hit record. You're watching the nerdy guy at the dentist. He's so excited to get his teeth cleaned. And then we hit stop. And then he changed his clothes. And we hit record again. And now he was the... the, big tough guy who wanted to beat up the nerdy guy and these two were fighting with each other and we just hit stop and and record each time to have them switch so it was basically this guy fighting with himself and during this fight the tough guy who wanted to beat him up had a jacket on that had like a dragon or something on the back it looked like it was like one of those uh like cobra kai looking kind of jackets okay sure and anyways he's talking about how tough he is and he stands up and he says i got all the chicks and i got my gang member he turns around 
to show the picture on the back of his jacket because it was supposedly the jacket that all of the guys in his gang wore. My friend tried to make up a name for his gang and the word Doonstief is what came out of his mouth. <laughs> so <laughs> the gang was the Doonstief. And then, and then as things do, it caught on and me and my friends thought it was funny. And so we started calling ourselves the Doonstief. So the group of us guys that hung out were the Dune Steve. I don't know why 15 years later I decided there's a fun word. Why don't we use that as the name of the podcast? But that's what I did. I'm sorry to have submitted you all to it. But sadly, there's your answer. That's where it came from. A cheesy inside joke that nobody should ever have had to listen to. Okay. So that, that's all the time we have for today. Yeah, that went a little longer than I meant for it to. As I well. want to thank my guest, Dom DeLuise. I want to thank Doc Severinsen, the Tonight Show Orchestra. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Ed. Did you feel like the, uh, the show was uh, one of our best? Yes. Sorry, that's, that's all I can do is Ed McMahon saying, yes, you are correct, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's a question from Tom Tancredi. He wants to know how many unique devices we recorded on. Over the years? Yeah, we started out with the cheapest possible gear we could get. I bought microphones off of Amazon that sold for less than $10 a piece. And... To get them together so that we could record on them, I got a little mixer, which was the smallest, cheapest... Uh, uh, was it a Shure mixer? I don't think it was even a Shure mixer. That would have been an actual brand name. It was this generic crappy mixer that could could accept two microphones and then a cord. And I think our whole setup cost us less than 40 bucks altogether. And that's what we started with. Eventually, my, <laughs> my daughter got a karaoke game for the PlayStation, and it came with two mics that you could plug into the PlayStation. And we were like, oh, wow, this plugs in with a USB. We could use these. And so <laughs> we dumped the mics that we had for these USB mics because we could plug it in and get, you know, the digital sound. Of these again even cheaper mics probably but the one thing about that was that it was it was recorded in stereo one of us was on one channel one of us was on the other channel so it was easier for editing you could edit out one person although since we're sitting right across from each other it really didn't help all that much because you would hear one of us start talking and then it would cut or you could kind of hear them in the background while the other guy was talking or whatever but so there was rig number two, PlayStation karaoke mics. And then I think out of the blue was Scott Pig, a listener of the show, without asking, just sent us. He asked me one time, hey, I wanted to send you guys something. What's your address? And so I told him and he sent us a full on, like a, a real mixer, real microphones, microphone stands, the whole nine yards it was, a, it was a lot of money that he had to have spent on this stuff. And we used that for a long time. In fact, I'm using that mic still. I'm using a desk stand instead of the uh, floor stands that he gave us. But uh, I would like to stick the floor stand in sometime. I just worry my son will get to it. My six-year-old can't see something and not touch it. I'm always afraid to leave anything out for even a minute. And we've had a, a several Zooms over the years. Yeah, I think I've only owned two. But I also have a third. Uh, this one is, uh, I, I'm using a H4N right now that one of our listeners donated to the show. He sent me an email one time saying, Hey, I've, I, don't, I, I, mean, I, I don't have money that I can donate to the show, but I do have a Zoom that I don't use anymore. And it's just sitting here gathering dust. I'd love to give it to you guys if you could use it. So I said, all right, yeah, send it along. And the cool thing is I can plug an XLR cable into it instead of just the tiny little normal kind of audio cable that you would use. So 
that's a plus. But yeah, I also have a uh, a lav mic, lavalier that uh, I use for my in the car podcasts. And I guess if you count the, the uh, various Go cameras that I've had and ruined and lost over the years, dropped into the water of the swamp or had stolen from my front yard, it's a, it's a fair amount of equipment. You've got one of those Go cameras too. Do you use that much? You, no. You did a thing or two with it, but... No, it's just sitting and it's got enough dust on it I could write your initials. Oh, okay. I just found that editing video was so frustrating and time consuming because <laughs> the length of time it takes to render the video and yeah. then and, and it, it just if it took 11 hours to render a video it took 11 hours but it never did it always would time out or have an error so right. you'd wait 10 hours and then it didn't work right so that frustrated me to the point where I was just like oh maybe I'll never do this again <laughs> but I, I shouldn't. If I had continued with it since January, when I did that video, by now I would be really good. Yeah, you'd be a pro. You wouldn't have any problems. Uh, but not me. No, I'm just, I'm uncomfortable with the video. You and I always talked about doing a video episode of That Gets My Goat where we talked about our deal breakers. Uh huh. And it's kind of a regret that we didn't do that years ago when we had that idea just because we could refer to that all of the time. It's like, oh, hey, guess who are in a movie together? Deal breaker number one of mine and deal breaker number one of yours. What do you say we don't go see that? You know, but we, <laughs> but we never did do that episode. We did a trial run video, which I thought was just meant to be amusing and someone was not amused by it in the, uh, you know, in that way. Uh, it was just <laughs> like, oh, okay, well, maybe we won't do this again. <laughs> Although, I, if I recall, you edited the video. I did. So the work would have been yours to do. I do. Yeah, in those days, definitely uh, it would have been all me doing the editing. Because <laughs> from what I remember, I just did it at work. Like in my off time when I was there, I was just like, oh, yeah, nobody's looking. I'll just quickly edit on this. Mm. I don't know if I could have continued to get away with that. I did get, I do have stuff on my computer at home that I can edit with. But yeah, my computer, it's, it's not up to the task for editing video, I don't think. It is getting relatively old. So there's that. And uh, I don't know, it's frustrating for me how computers get old so friggin' fast. Or maybe it's just that they keep expanding video. You know, you can't just have HD. It's already time you have to have 4K. And if like, my computer can't even... Editing system doesn't even want to use 4K. It just dies whenever I try and throw any in there. So I have to... I shoot everything that I can on 4K now because I know that someday down the line I'm going to be like, oh, why didn't I shoot that in 4K when I had a camera that would do 4K... Because, you know, five, maybe I didn't have the stuff that could handle 4K then, but two years later, of course I would. And now I'll be like, why did I shoot that on just HD when I could have had 4K? For years, I shot just on mini DV tape, and I insisted on never going to digital for a long, long time. And now I'm just like, why did I do that? Now I've just got all these stinking tapes that I can't get the video off of and even watch. So I turned myself into a halfway early adapter because of that. Okay, here's another question. The second question uh, from Tom, it's, it was a two-parter. Is there an episode or story you wish you could redo? As far as episodes go, I don't think so. Although Lord knows we have redone plenty of episodes. Uh, <laughs> Is there an episode you wish you didn't have to redo? I think our Force Awakens <laughs> review episode, we did that three effing times. And I, yeah, there was an episode where you went to Disneyland and we recorded for like an hour and a half and then realized that you had been recording right up to the point where it was like, okay, ready, start. And then it went off. <laughs> so we had to sit down and do that again. And those are the worst. But as far as stories go... 
the very first story we ever ran, the Double Vision one, I never liked the sound quality in that. That was one where we had a an edited version of the story with one voice saved down to an mp3 and then that was sent to you and then you opened that and put your voice in it and saved it down to an mp3 and then we got the third voice which you sent to me and i edited it onto the track that you and i had done and then saved that as an mp3 and by that point the quality was really noticeably bad yeah and we were new so we didn't really know how to make it sounds like all three voices were in the same space. And I, I liked that story enough that I always thought, gosh, I, I wish we could do that one again. Uh, especially since it was our first story. Right. I figured, okay, a lot of people are going to hear this one. Just, you know, we're going to test out this show and see if we like it. And it bothered me that the sound was bad. And it, it took us a while to realize you don't compress the file. You don't save it as an MP3 <laughs> until you're done. Right. Because every time you do it, the sound gets a little crappier. It becomes VHS tape copied onto another VHS tape onto another. It's like uh, multiplicity where they, they get the, the copy made from a copy. And they're like, you know how when you make a copy from a copy, it's not as good as the original? And that's like the crazy version of Michael Keaton. Anyways, <laughs> I remember back in the very first few months of the show, we, we got our first story from Rick Kennett, which was called The Seas of Castle Hill Road. Okay. And Rick Kennett is Australian. And we were just like, okay, we can't just do this story about a guy who's in Queensland with just our normal american accents because that would suck and if we had to try and do a story in australian accents that would probably suck worse so we asked around to see if we could get a hold of somebody who could do it for us and listener cameron harsborough said oh i i I could probably do it for you and so we sent him the story and he read the whole thing and i think it was his first time doing something like that And he hadn't quite figured out how his microphone setup worked. He had some kind of setting on it clicked wrong. And so we did the whole story and it was just really faint. And we found a way to bring up the audio as best as we could and we managed to get it out. But again, it was it was another one of those things where the sound quality wasn't as good as we wanted the story to be and i remember really liking the story the same as like you did with double vision you know really great story i mean it was one of my favorites that's why we made it our first episode uh the seas of castle hill road was like that it was a really good story that i i wanted to be good but the production didn't come out as great i still thought it came out cool and i was pretty proud of ourselves for managing to get two Australian people to do the voices of the main character and the woman that was in the story. You know, that was, I guess, episode 13 of the show. And we managed to rustle that up, which I was pretty proud of myself, ourselves for. I don't know. So uh, Sometimes I just wish there was some way that, yeah, the audio quality could match the story quality. But um, I've heard... That like when Abby Hilton first was checking out our show before she ever decided to send us a story and so forth, she was listening. And when she heard that story, uh, Seas of Castle Hill Road, she said, yeah, these guys are good. They can pick a good story. So I'm going to I'm going to give them a I'm going to give them a shot. This is a show worth trying out. I guess in the end, it didn't scare people away. So that's good. Right. Yeah. I wonder what ever happened to Abigail Hilt. We made contact with her way, way back, and then nothing for all these years. I hope she's all right. Successful. <laughs> I hope those uh, those Shelt stories are doing well for her. <laughs> <laughs> we should have answered this question last week. Uh, John Hyam asks, What do we have to do to get more Secret Santa stories from Josh Roseman? Maybe we need to do... One of those Kickstarter kind of things where we like say, okay, everybody donate, and then we can uh, 
bribe Josh Roseman to write another story by <laughs> saying you get this much money if you do. The thing is, it's been long enough since he sent us the Krampusnacht one that he's probably got more Secret Santa stories. Yeah, it's possible. You know what I mean? We ran his story yesterday, uh, yesterday, recently, <laughs> <laughs> and it was four years old by the time we ran it. Yeah. And in four years, a real writer writes a heck of a lot. Right. You no, that doesn't apply to you or me, but uh, to most people, yeah. But real writers. Yeah, I would think it's it's pretty likely, and that might be the problem, the fact that we had his story for four years, and he was waiting for us to finish it before he sent us another one. I don't know. It's hard to uh, trust somebody when they take four years to get your story done. Yeah, I, I wouldn't talk to me again if somebody had treated <laughs> me in this way, or, or a story of mine in this way. We recorded that waypoint episode so recently that uh, yeah i don't know what josh's reaction is or whether you know he feels like it was worth the wait or that we did it justice or oh my gosh i can't wait to send you something else uh, or if you know that ship has passed that ship has sailed you know yeah it's there, possible there are a lot of podcasts out there and uh, i i'm trying to remember there were there were a couple of series that we ran on the show of stories where, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to run another installment of this. And we took long enough to run them that I started hearing installments of those series on other podcasts. Right. And part of me was just like, but, but, but those are ours. We, uh. yeah, we would have done that if you'd given it to us. Yeah. I remember being sad about that. You know, but it's very possible that Secret Santa has gone that way. You snooze, you lose. Um, so so uh, the question is, what has to be done to ensure more Secret Santa stories? Well, this episode probably has to air, and then we will know <laughs> if maybe nothing has to be done. They've already been written. Well, there you go. Or Josh can just comment in, you know, in the, in the comments ironically, what it would take for him to write another one. Yeah, there you go. All right. Jesse Sparks wants to know, what is your favorite monster? Well, my mine is a werewolf. I, I love the werewolf. I've written several werewolf stories. Uh, I Did we run a werewolf story on this show ever? Oh, we have to have. You... Did my story ever make the show? I did a werewolf story once. Ah, uh, right, right, it yes. A, it got a one. It did, of course. It <laughs> deserved a one. I think that's one that we did for incentive for people who had donated. Oh, that's right. It was an incentive episode. We had to have done another werewolf that actually made the show show, right? You and I did, early, early on on our show, we did a werewolf story for another podcast. And I put in sound effects for it, if you recall. And uh, Was that the one that was written in second person? I hope not, because that would ruin a story. <laughs> but I got an email from the producer of that show, or host, or whatever you want to call it. And he's like, oh, shoot, I nearly asked you to do it over. Uh, I kept hearing all these sounds. You must have left the windows open or something like that. But don't worry. <laughs> I edited it, and I think I got all of them removed. So, uh, yeah, that, that episode's going to air on Friday. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, dude. Nice. Oh, no, yeah. no, not nice. I mean, I, I, if it makes me sound like an a-hole, I don't care. That pissed me off. It still does. Yeah. So it's good that I can hold a grudge. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. That anyway. That was a werewolf story, and then yeah, you wrote one. I've run one on my show, but uh, I always want to do more. I just I really like that. That you know, even a man who's pure at heart and says his prayers at night may become a wolf when the wolf's bane blooms and the moon is full and bright. That stuff just ha has captivated me since I was a little kid. What is your favorite monster, sir? Um. My favorite monster is the six-year-old kid that uh, cries at me every day. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Killing. 
No, uh, let me think about that for a second. Well, I, I, I don't know. What is the what is the monster that I write about the most often? What do you think? Aside from children, which I do, <laughs> we uh, we did a story of yours where it was like a burgeoning serial killer, uh -huh. or at least at the end of the story, it was just like, oh, uh oh, and so maybe it is that that is the monster that you write about more than your demons or goblins or chuckies yeah i do kind of do that a lot where there's something that kind of pushes somebody over the edge somebody who's becoming a serial killer i think that probably is more of my favorite monsters just people in general they're more monstrous than most monsters are my favorite monster was muno from uh yo gabba gabba oh geez who I did include in one of my stories. But we never ran that on the show. We haven't run that on the show, but I've recorded half of that story. Not the better half. And uh, soon I will record the other half. And then we will run it on the show. So it is to come. All right. Amuno is terrifying, folks. If you don't <laughs> know what that is, just type it in. But not at work. And clear your browser history when you're done. NSFW. <laughs> Oh, here's a question we can get off the uh, table real quick, because I think we already talked about it. Jeff Carls wants to know if we still have that final episode we recorded years ago. Oh, that's cool that he remembered. We did say that in this episode, right? Yeah. <laughs> we've been recording for a while, and now I can't remember if I said that today or oh, not. Oh, wow. We've been going <sighs> that long. Well, maybe we'll need to do two episodes of quick Q&A. Yeah, we might have to. Because this is taking longer than I thought it would. But yes, we do still have it. Jeff Carls would prefer to never have to hear it. And yeah, as I said before, I wouldn't want to put it out because we might confuse a few people and stop even looking for us. It's super dated. It is. But I still feel like the stuff that we said in it is true and relevant. Yeah, I remember the ending of it when we signed off and i heard that and it made me want to cry oh good and i don't know if it would make anyone else want to cry i mean it was be i wanted to cry because it was my show and it was making me think of never having it again and i just thought oh man i don't know why but that makes me really sad well we also recorded it in case one of us was dead or in <laughs> case we had a falling out and we're no longer friends. Right. And so we weren't going to be doing the show anymore. Or, yeah, just life interrupts and says, hey, you guys don't need to podcast anymore. Yeah, I, I, can't, I couldn't see a good scenario where we would run the last episode. <laughs> there, the, it, would, it would definitely be best if uh, we never had to go there. So uh, we'll try and keep it off the table as well. Kevin David Anderson would like to know if we hadn't ever met one another, would either of us be doing a podcast? Uh, I, I think I would. Yeah. I mean, even though you were the one that got me started on this, I had been doing stuff with audio for a long time and really enjoyed voicing things and recording my stories, recording other people's stories and, uh, now, all these years later, it's so easy to just, you know, upload your stuff and YouTube and all that stuff that I, I think that I would still have done it. You don't think the hurdle of having to learn the technical aspect of it would have ever kept you away? Because in the early days, you would just like use the mic on your computer to record with, right? Just whatever built in mic. I didn't know there were mics on computers. <laughs> what, I know what were I'm you using I've, then. <laughs> I've never used a, whatever you just said. I've always had to plug something into the computer to record. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> but when I lived in LA, I would record stories and all that. And if there was a way to upload those, even then with the, the terrible audio quality that I recorded on, I might have done it. I'm just saying today in 2018, it's so easy, like on your blog or something, oh, yeah. you can upload audio. And so I'm saying the, the, the learning curve, yeah, that might have been a hurdle. But today, 
you just push a button, like, you know, when you're uploading a picture. Right. Sooner or later, the easiness of it all would have overcome any fears, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah, I think that I probably would have done it as well. I, I mean, I've mentioned before, I did three episodes of a soccer podcast before I ever did the first episode of The Dune Steve. Announcer Man was on soccer podcast with me for that matter. So uh, I suppose that yes, I would, because I did a podcast without... Yeah. I'm just kind of that way. Sooner or later, I, I think I would have in one way or another. Pretty definitely would have probably done that, I think. But the world would have been sadder because it wouldn't have been the Dune Steve. Okay, I can't, I can't pull that off. I tried. And Kevin David Anderson also wants to know if you could be any Star Trek character, who would you be? Me? Or just... Well, you and me. Who would you be? And then I can say who I would be. Well, I think it would have to be either Kirk or Spock. And I, Kirk, because, you know, he, he was always betting the alien women. And uh, he's so big and bombastic and he's the star of the show. But the the women always gravitated toward Spock. The fans love Spock. The girls don't fantasize about growing up and marrying Captain Kirk. They want Spock. And so I guess, uh, you know, I have to decide if I want green women or human women. So, yeah, <laughs> well, we can just say Kirk then. Uh, you? <laughs> there you go. We now know what kind of woman you want. Uh, I think I would probably be Lieutenant Yar because, <laughs> sadly, I'm just not a Star Trek guy. I, I probably couldn't make it past a season. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Dave Wallace wants to know, was there far more than the recommended yearly serving of Count Chocula ingested that day? Wait, what? <clears throat> now that refers to an episode of our little thing that we used to do once a year called the 13 Nights of Halloween, right? Oh, where we would do a marathon. Sure. Right. We did a marathon of Halloween related things. And I think one of the years we decided... That we would buy Count Chocula, and I think we had Boo Berry and F Frankenberry. Why is there two berry cereals? What's that all about? Well, because blueberry and strawberry are two different things. Okay. They should have made it more straw sounding for the Frankenberries then. <laughs> Anyways, we got a bunch of those cereals because we used to meet at Target every week. We'd just go to the parking lot there, meet each other, and then move on to whatever else we were going to do. But we would often go into Target and look at stuff, and we would go in, and we'd see the Frankenberry and the Count Chocula. And we thought, we should use this in one of our episodes, and so we did. We went into Target, we bought a box of each of these cereals, we bought bowls and spoons and a thing of milk... And we went off to the parking lot where we usually would... Uh, I think that one was the Coles parking lot because Coles would close and the parking lot would empty out so it wouldn't be noisy there. So we went to the Coles parking lot and we had ourselves some cereal just to see because had you had any of that cereal since you were young? No, but I didn't have kids so I didn't really have the opportunity, I didn't think. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever had that cereal because when I was young, we didn't get cereal with sugar in That's it. That's right. The closest thing we got to sugary cereal was Raisin Bran because sometimes the raisins had sugar in it. Although my mom would usually try and get the uh, the healthy one. There was some kind of healthy version of it where they would have less sugar or maybe unsugared, unsweetened raisins or whatever. Your parents would just throw a piece of bread into the room and said, you know, whoever gets this gets to eat today. Good luck. Fight! <laughs> uh, yeah, so we had that. I, I don't know. You know, it's funny. I remember the act of hanging out in that uh, parking lot and eating those cereals. But I don't remember at all what they tasted like. I'm sure they tasted like a generically random cereal. Like, you know, those Malto Meal cereals that are like the fake knockoffs of real cereals kind of a thing. Sure. 
that's basically what I kind of remembered as being just kind of like, well, this has a faintly strawberry <laughs> kind of a taste to it. Did we, do you remember appreciating those cereals in any way? I don't. I, I can't remember. I, I'm sure you took the cereal home and gave it to your kids. I think I did, yeah, what was left over. It's not like we would have eaten all three boxes that night, although maybe you ate them on the drive home. <laughs> yeah, that's why I wound up with diabetes eventually. <laughs> it was all due to booberry. It was booberry. <laughs> Monster cereals are back. <laughs> All right, John Hyam has a follow-up question to that. If you could travel back in time to that night, what would you tell yourself? Run! You would just yell that for a really long time, very loudly, just like Minority Report, huh? Yeah, that is an unwatchable moment in Minority Report, sir. You know that was the last <laughs> movie my dad went and saw? Oh, yeah, I think I... I always felt bad. I sort of dragged him to that. And he never went to a movie again. <laughs> Do you think it was because of Minority It was because Report? of Run! He's just like... I'm, I'm sure of it. It has to be. It was just like, that's it. No, I'm never going to see another movie. I, I kind of wish I had never gone to see another movie after that. <sighs> we would have had no That Gets My Goats episodes. Because that's what that podcast has turned into, is just a movie review podcast. Although on occasion we make other ones. Rarely, but it happens. I don't know. If if people gave a crap about that, I guess we could... There's always things that are angering me. Things that bother me. Things that are like, <laughs> oh gosh, I gotta call big. <laughs> things and that are getting your yeah, goat? because that's what it was intended to be. It's just like, okay, let's get together. Because we did anyway. It's like, oh, have you heard this thing that's going around? I was like, oh no. And we would irritate one another with it you know you you do it all the time we'd get together in the parking lot at, at target and you'd have something to complain about but we don't do it very often no it usually has to be a movie that we saw i don't know maybe we'll, we'll do another of the other kind of episodes soon and see if that works yeah see if uh have any listeners after it's done all right Bria Burton wants to know when the next barbecue sketch is coming. Are there any in the making? Uh, there are not. I liked the idea of recording those when we got a bunch of people together. Just was It was neat to do those in person. But uh, we do have a sketch that we recorded and is edited that needs to come out at some point. Yeah, we'll need to. I mean, we just finished doing Out of the Bag, which is a, a similar kind of a thing where it's a sketch that was. Uh, I mean, it wasn't the barbecue sketch, but it was a sketch. Um, I'm sure there will eventually be more barbecue sketches. Uh, yeah, maybe we just need to come up with a, a reason. We need to have a, a, a reason to get together. Uh, maybe we need to make a. Dune Steve Con, where everybody who likes the Dune Steve comes to a certain place. We could hold it in a phone booth. <laughs> There's no phone booths. What is this thing you speak of? And and eventually, when the show gets really big, we can hold it in a police box because they're bigger on the inside. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. That would that would be. Uh, I remember talking about that where I thought we needed to have some kind of a Dune Steve retreat, where you know we could get everybody who's ever been involved in the Dune Steve and say, "Hey, anybody who wants to come, we're gonna all meet here." Oh, we just pick some hotel in some place that was near. You know, we could like have everybody who would like to come say where they live, and then we could pick a place that was kind of close to within driving distance of the most people and then a few people could fly in and i don't know it sounds like an interesting idea right i mean i miss the new media expos where some people flew in everybody else drove in and you know it was there in las vegas good spot <laughs> the funny thing was we went to las vegas and we all just hung out in our hotel room we, we didn't go gambling, we didn't go to any shows, we didn't go to the strip clubs, we didn't go to anything. Although we did go to the roller coaster once, and we went to Denny's. 
That's what you remember fondly there, sir. Yeah, that's about all we did other than sitting in the hotel room podcasting. Until the wee hours of the night, I remember reading a story for Scribe Harris where I was pretty much asleep by the time I finished it. It was so late and I was so tired. I don't know that that story ever came out either. Did you ever hear a finished version of that story anywhere? (laughs) I didn't. That's too bad. But yeah, I I think it would be worth it to uh, put together Dune Steve Khan or Dune Steve Retreat. Well, yeah, we talked about that, about going somewhere with a bunch of people and writing, like a writing retreat. But it was a a podcasting thing where it's like, okay, we brought our stories and we're going to record them all and... I've written a couple of sketches specifically for this thing. We, I don't know that we seriously talked about it, but we kicked around dates and where we would go and stuff. And yeah, didn't didn't ever happen. But I think it still needs to. We need to we need to start kicking it around again. Maybe we can resurrect it <laughs> to make it even more inclusive. Allow fans to uh, to join in in some way. Friends of the show, as it were. Well, last time we ran you know the the josh roseman story which we recorded on skype and if we had put that out in a timely manner maybe we would have done several skype episodes after that and it wouldn't (laughs) have been too hard for me to find out who could be available for a call and say okay that's how many people are going to be at the barbecue for this next barbecue sketch it's just if we could get back in the groove of doing the show there are stories that I think would lend themselves to full cast more than just a single narrator. And, and we could just do it on Skype. I, and, and it's always neat to interact, whether they were, are with people that we've known for a long time or they're, yeah, just brand new voices or fans or, you know. Yeah, it's cool to be able to interact, to, to see what's on. You know, we always are just sitting here staring at a screen talking into a microphone basically we're by ourselves and you don't know what's on the other side you don't get to see the other person on the other side of the you know line with their headphones going in there and listening and and it's neat to realize that there's an audience out there you know what i mean it's not like an actor on the stage that gets to stand out there and see their crowd that has arrived for their show. So, you know, it, it can be a lonely pursuit. It's neat to be able to see that there is somebody else out there. I don't know. I always thought that would be fun to even just pick a convention that's happening somewhere and just say, hey, we're going to be at this convention. Anybody who likes the Dune Steve can also come and get together and we'll meet you there and we'll hang out. We'll do karaoke, whatever. Maybe we'll have to try that. I don't know. Comment if you think that we should. Let us know, hey, I'd go to that. Or, hey, F you guys, you're totally not worth it. You know, whatever. Whatever you have to no, say. Don't, don't, don't say that last <laughs> part. Just keep that to yourself where it can do the most damage. <laughs> All right. Marshall Latham wants to know, are you going to do a broken mirror treatment for the crappening? I don't even know where that came from. The, uh, the running joke of the crappening. <laughs> the, there was that M. Night Shyamalan movie called The Happening. Yep. And it was really, really bad. And either I referred to it as the crappening or somebody else did. Uh, and I feel like we just started referring to it as that that was an actual story. And then Marshall, at that New Media Expo, I think the last time we went, had written a script where I shared my story, The Crappening, with everyone. (laughs) And uh, and we got like the very tail end of that story written by Marshall. Uh, It was was entertaining. It was for his uh, Journey Into podcast. I don't know that we heard anything after that of it. Do you is that how you remember it or do you remember us actually talking about doing a broken mirror crappening? Oh, I don't know that we ever said we were going to do the gro- broken mirror crappening, but we could if people want to come up with something that goes with the crappening. Heck, we could do it as like one of those episodes like we did with the Christmas episode and the uh 
not the bees episode <laughs> where everybody just does something about the crappening. Your take on the crappening. <laughs> Maybe that's what Marshall's referring to. Yeah, I felt like that not the bees thing went really, really well. Yeah, and and I often think about, oh, we ought to do another broken mirror thing. Because, yeah, it generates content for the show. Yeah. But more than that, it encourages us to write a story that we never would have written otherwise. And that is always good. Yeah, that's true. At this point, I'm in need of some encouragement, too, I have to admit. So maybe it would be worth it. I'll have to put some thought into that as well. Hmm. Okay, Steve Moss asks, what does the Dune Steef mean again? Oh, no. Okay, back in, like, the start of the 1900s, there was this guy whose name was Trevor Dune Steef. He's famous for being the guy who invented the parking meter. He's kind of a personal hero of mine, so that's... Whoa, 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 that's wait a second. You that. named the show after somebody who... Inv- I mean, that's terrible, dude. That's like naming the show after somebody who invented the electric chair or the uh, that guy that would make lampshades out of human skin. I, I, what a, an awful person. Well, the funny thing is the guy who invented the electric chair was actually the, this guy's cousin, Joseph Steve. And that guy who made lampshades out of people's skin was William Doonstief. And uh, so, yeah, it, it is just like that because they're all related. Really, they're all heroes of mine. So, y- yeah, you're right. Okay, uh, next question. Dave Wallace asks, To what do you attribute your avoidance of civil authorities this long? I would say probably just obscurity. <laughs> That's true. If we had a lot of listeners and a lot of awards, then the people hunting us would have heard, hey, those guys are still out there. They faked their deaths. <laughs> That's right. It, it would Yeah, they would have really figured us out by now. Uh-oh, Marshall Latham is after us again. Are we ever going to hear your Metallica titled stories? Even if they are just part one. Ooh, that's feet to the fire, sir. That's interesting. Have we ever talked about that on this show? I'm sure, well, that's right. We haven't done this show this year. Yeah, I don't remember if we mentioned it on the show. We mentioned it on That Gets My Go, but nobody listens to that. Is that where we mentioned it? I wrote my story and I'm willing to share it. I did send it to you. Did you, like, send it back or anything like that i don't know you sent it to me and that's where the process ended (laughs) i know that you were like expanding yours into a gigantic tale of whoa yeah i think mine was twenty two thousand words last time i looked twenty two twenty three thousand words did you actually finish it though yeah i did sounds like there's our answer no, we're not going to run a 23,000-word story on the Dune, Steve. Why not? We can do it. In... We're not going to run a 3,000-word story on the Dune, Steve. <laughs> we can do it in parts. All right, that's it. I'm going to start recording mine. That's more f- feet to the fire. Why would Marshall bring something like that up? Oh, because he's evil. Oh, well, why I had long suspected. Oh, we've known it all along. Come on. In case you're unaware of what Marshall is talking about, there, shoot, way back in the day, I think it, did it start from you trying to get me to write? And you said, well, what if we did this? And you figured, Big Light's Metallica. What if we did stories where each of us had to write a story based on a Metallica song? And it was one of those things that didn't go anywhere for a long time. And then just recently, you were feeling really... Blocked. Writers blocked. And you wanted to just get back to it. You were just dead in the water as far as writing goes. And you called me up one day and you're like, man, we got to do something. I suggested, well, why don't we do that? Because I had recently had an idea that went with a Metallica song. And I thought, oh, the time has come to do that. (laughs) And so I said, why don't we do this? You foolishly agreed And we even published like a blog post telling everyone so that we couldn't escape the shame if we didn't follow through. 
I guess this is Marshall making sure that we follow through because yeah, we um, I wrote mine and apparently you wrote yours. So it sounds like we need to get them out there. More content for the show, right? That seems to be the running theme of this episode. I'm uncomfortable with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we've been recording a long time. I think there are still a bunch of questions that we have not answered. So maybe um, we just have to promise people there will be more to come. All right, I guess we could probably call it quits. Uh, why don't we do just one more question? And okay, you sure? Yeah, we'll just one more. All right. Yeah, I mean, because there's a bunch for next time, so I don't want to leave us with too much to do next time. So let me see. All right, so let's see. VJJ has this question. Hey guys, I'm a really big fan of the songs that you guys do on the show. And so I was wondering if you could get fake Sean Connery to uh, do a duet. Uh, you know what? It looks like we're out of time, folks. But thanks for listening. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's really late after all. I, I'm, I'm so tired. Uh, I believe there was somebody who asked us to make this a double-sized episode anyways. So Rob Broughton, this is for you. This episode's over. We'll be back with more later. Much later. I hope that's what you meant. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, everybody, to the anniversary episode part one. We'll be back with some more conversation, including something you really want to tune in for. You don't want to miss what we've got to say about Announcer Man next time around. Oh, gosh. We're supposed to do that in this one. Yeah, cool. That, leave them hanging. That's good. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Rich Outfield. I'm Big Anklevich. Good night. See you next time. The Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine is published under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. This means that you can share the Dune Steve with anyone you'd like, but you can't sell or change the file. I'm going home. Take two. Are you waiting for me to say an electrical-powered butt plug? Yeah, uh, I was thinking we probably had more questions that we can handle in one episode a little while ago <laughs> as uh, the time was going longer and longer. The one that I always remember was the first shoot. Let me see if I can find what it was called. You'll never find it. Never. It was from early on in the show. Sorry, I got nothing. And uh, I got an email. I got an email. F but I got an email from the... Uh, this one maybe we should save for the next time that we do... What? Which one is that? The guy who invented... What was the third thing you said? Yes. Uh, Solar-powered butt plug. Just, I'll take your word for it. There's one, one that says, What are your favorite stories that we have done? Both... Oh, it's even more complex. What are your favorite stories, both your own and other people's you have done? What's something just awful... That one seems like we need to at least scroll through the the website for a while and see what stories are there, because 10 years is a long time to remember anything. Let me look at this. Oh, you didn't feel like that was the best question to end on? No, no, it's just um, we're, we're actually, now that we've kept going for a while, we're kind of running low on questions. Maybe you can divide right, it up. But the what have been your favorite episodes one is you and I will talk for 20 something minutes about that. Yeah, that one's going to be. A, and it is 2 a.m. for you, dude. That is true. So I was wondering if you could get Sean Connery. Sorry, Sir Sean, wait, sorry, Sir Fake Sean Connery to uh, do eyeing little girls with bad intent. Uh, how about this one? The electronic butt plug or something.